I want us to take a few minutes and pray for the church in Nigeria. We will not ask God for more power. We will not ask God for more grace. We will ask God for mercy. Can I ask a question? In church, when you attended this morning, how many of you prayed concerning the full and invasion in your church? Please wave your hand. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. In the church that you attended last week, how many of you prayed for or prayed against the full and invasion last week? Can you raise your hand? We have more. Two weeks or three weeks ago, how many of you in your church prayed against the full and invasion? Can you wave your hand? So it means we had more last week than this week. It's 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 it shows that we are a reactionary church. When we did hit is turned on, we respond. When we feel that it has gone down, then we keep quiet. Um, it is military intelligence to know that when you are in the middle of a battle and the enemy seems to have stopped doing anything, it's because they are trying to hit big. That's wisdom. So I want us to pray that in mercy, the Lord will awaken the body of Christ in Nigeria. The Lord will cure us of slumber. The, the Lord will cure us of insensitivity in the spirit. The Lord will cure us of our pride and our arrogance. There is a spirit on the landscape that says we have known God, we don't need more. But I want us to lift up our voices and ask for mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Over the landscape called Nigeria. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. Let the church be visited with the mercies of God. Mercy. Let it flow like rivers. Let it flow like rivers. That in mercy we are awakened. Mercy, we cry for mercy. We cry for mercy. We acknowledge our depravity. God is a spirit and those that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God has commissioned his servants, Pastor Tolua Lugu Adola, with the mandate of true worship, teaching the church the patterns of true worship. Be blessed as you listen. Thank you, Lord. 
there is more, there is more. She come on to be at her. In front of no se tu ste tata bahaso. Jesus ya kapatu akataga barasha. Ina manala bo se kapata. We press for more. We press for more. There is more in you. There is more in you. We recommend it abayata. Evelino malene wona tabala dala bashaya. Rate mola bala la bali la bala la bala la bosha kai. Shaka. Shaka in kabara la bosha tata. Ina bosha mea. Ina bosha vika la rebebe to manza. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, aha, suma, raba, baba, sumi, atilinos. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I want us to take a few minutes, a few minutes, a few minutes, and pray. I want us to take a few minutes and pray for the Church of Christ in Nigeria. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I want us to take a few minutes and pray for the church in Nigeria. We will not ask God for more power. We will not ask God for more grace. We will ask God for mercy. Can I ask a question? In church, when you attended this morning, how many of you prayed concerning the full and invasion in your church? Please wave your hand. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. In the church that you attended last week, how many of you prayed for or prayed against the full invasion last week? Can you raise your hand? We have more. Two weeks or three weeks ago, how many of you in your church prayed against the full invasion? Can you wave your hand? So it means we had more last week than this week. It's 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 it shows that we are a reactionary church. When we did heat is turned on, we respond. When we feel that it has gone down, then we keep quiet. Um, it is military intelligence to know that when you are in the middle of a battle and the enemy seems to have stopped doing anything, it's because they are trying to hit big. That's wisdom. So I want us to pray that in mercy the Lord will awaken the body of Christ in Nigeria. The Lord will cure us of slumber. The, the Lord will cure us of insensitivity in the spirit. The Lord will cure us of our pride and our arrogance. There is a spirit on the landscape that says we have known God, we don't need more. But I want us to lift up our voices and ask for mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Atabo kotele atados. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Over the landscape called Nigeria. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. Let the church be visited with the mercies of God. Dai ome sente pasus atalio te parosa me atwa. Di kokoteke ni koreke bo sotote kaborasu tuakata. Mercy, let it flow like rivers. Let it flow like rivers. That in mercy we are awakened. E konken, e na koko na mo si kabahanto. E totale ko suke suta bada keka. Raku tu keke ke moto ke na tili la tota bash. Mercy, we cry for mercy. We cry for mercy. We acknowledge our depravity. We acknowledge our arrogance. Visit us, O oh God. Visit us, O oh God. In your mercy. Atada bashaya. Ikadada mosi kanomente le kamonte le kamonte le le koka baba tota natiata. Mercy. Mercy. Inodio 
Rapose, imbosute amo, rapo santo menalute apa. Mercy, mercy, have mercy, have mercy, abasaka tamato, have mercy, Jesus. Etu mina tu papa, inalebo sata. Can we plead the blood of Jesus? To begin to flow over the church in Nigeria, we invoke the power of the blood. We invoke the power of the blood, the curative powers of the blood of Jesus. Mento shekabaya. We make a demand for the curing of the church. Karonondo do do de keke de bosa itiatonata dalusela mote. The blood of the Christ, the blood of the Christ, the blood of the Christ. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Shalababosha, ishana barasa lebayatela. Let the blood flow. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. In Jesus precious name I pray I was on the road this afternoon between two and four there about and I was asking questions of the Lord concerning this service and the days to come and one of the things the Lord is making me understand is that most churches are finishing their fast right and the Lord was telling me that We still need to wait. We still need to wait. Because the Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It means when you wait upon the Lord until you notice, until the renewal of strength has become an experiential reality, you cannot stop waiting. So if the church says 14 days After 14 days If you have not touched the renewal of strength You see we are not being born into activities You have been born into a reality So until the reality is touched You cannot stop The demand of every season is different So if there is a standard 40, 20, 30, 21 days who told you that the demand for this season is 21 years are different seasons are different you see I'm, I'm not a controversial person God just raises controversial issues with me Imana when you were smaller on my way to Akure I loved a boy I loved a boy and the boy was complaining of hunger the mom had a big cooler there were four children in, that were following the mother to travel the boy took five or six spoons of rice and then he asked for water and he was filled up. You can't give me that kind of food. Because I have grown. The demands are different. So you can't say it's finished congregationally because you see, what God wants to do with you may begin as a congregation. That's what happened at Pentecost. How many of them were in the house? A hundred and how many names of those in that house do you know? They all heard the sound like a rushing mighty wind. They all saw that ball of fire come into the room. It split and it was equal portion that landed on everybody. But it, everybody worked it to, a, to different degrees. To their degree of investment, we ended up hearing their names. We just knew they were 120. All the others were missing. Only a few showed up. If you have if you have any altar of truth revealed to you that God has something to do with your life when a congregational season is finished you engage God as an individual so I was, I was flipping worship songs when I came back and I was in town and then I came to my house and I've been worshipping all through with um the song thank you oh my father for giving us your son and for leaving your spirit to the world your work or not is done that was what i was worshiping with from from um Ushubo. I, I was on the journey with pastor gabriel and pastor john and 
we got to a police checkpoint and the policemen wanted to misbehave of all the people in the car it was me they thought was the suspect so I was not angry but I had moved out of the car so one girl said ah you are disturbing this guy he's already preparing for Sunday because I was seriously worshipping and I didn't know when the guy said come down I want to search you and I looked at him and said where is your warrant he had, they had guns and everybody in the car was afraid and the guy said, who are you? I said, I am a pastor. He said, no, no, pastors are nothing. I said, you have met a different one. So what? The driver said, I'm not rude. I said, I'm not rude. If you meet a teacher, he says he's a teacher. It's intoxication. So the ogre came. You know, the senior ones, they use jazz. You know. So when we were discussing, the ogre came and touched me. He said, I'm a yato. Sorry, sir. Am I long? what i'm saying is that it was not just that i was praying movements had happened we prayed before we left but i felt a need to just increase and go beyond what every other person was doing they were just in. there was even one prophet yesterday it was yesterday i first heard that a prophet is not a christian uh, is is that was the revelation that that guy preached from from Oshobo to Bomosho to show that he's superior to all of us, he's a gifted man. At a point, I looked at his face. So, if I see him in town, I'll challenge him that uh, when he ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men. As he gave some to be prophets, he also gave some to be apostles. Even pastors are not like him. The believer is even, is even a mutant, it's not normal. But what I'm saying is travel beyond the crowd. I have noticed that even when I minister to people, when I stay long, the intensity increases. You, you are a living witness. When I stay long, the intensity increases because time is irredeemable. So it makes it of great value in the spirit. If you give God money, you can go and walk and get that money again. If you give God time, you can't redeem it. You can't get the time back. He spent, he spent. So the things that are redeemable, they bring, they bring a lot of feedbacks in the spirit. So someone must decide to wait. I know the fasting season is over, but you must decide to wait. I know you've lost a lot of kg and you celebrated today that time has come. You want to start eating. But I, I hear the Lord saying, wait. Have you received enough instructions for the year yet? Wait. The empowerment that you trusted God for has it become a reality or you want to leave this season and you want to start hoping again we will wait we will wait we will wait that's the song he told me to sing we will wait we will wait Shut up, Holy God We will wait On you Holy God We will wait On you I will wait I will wait Shut up Sama Bahat. I will wait. 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 Holy God. Holy God. I will wait. On you. Holy God. Holy God. I will wait. 
grows. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. We will wait on you, Holy God. One more time. Isaka da Mosa Hata. Abu Ed, Abu Ed, Abu Ed. The night is not past yet. The day has not broken, so we will wait. In the name of Jesus, Holy God, yes. I will wait on you. Tola le manaba salabara la baderesa. Hey, la barala besa. Hey, la baseya. Eka mona na ro. A small, more sure word of prophecy. Unto which we must take heed as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day star, until, 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 until the day star arise in our hearts, until we will wait. In Jesus precious name please say hello to your neighbors and please be seated can you hear the sound of words like the sound of many trumpets it's a sound of worship coming from up my father's throne There were clouds Of many worshippers Like the sound of many trumpets Giving glory to His name So we sing holy Holy, holy are you, Lord. So holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you lord your majesty i can but bow i lay my own for you now in royal robes I don't deserve I live to serve 
your majesty you did not wait for me to draw nigh to you but you clothed yourself with frail humanity you did not wait for me to cry out to you but you let me hear your voice calling me and I am forever grateful to you Lord I am forever grateful for the cross am forever grateful to you that you came to seek and save the Lord for you alone you are worthy to be praised for you alone you are worthy to be blessed but there is no one else like you Lord I found no one There is no one else like you, like you, like you. There is no one else like you. In the cross, in the It's still my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. I won't stop here. For in the cross, Lord, in the cross, be my glory. Oh, the excellency of all things. In a noske cobra raste to set it a cataya. In a deca cobra te teza has the hasia cabahash. Anoras de cabaha. In the grass. In the grass. Ramosi cole masata. That's the hope that one day I will become like him. The cross, the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. The cross. The cross. The cross. The cross. The we ask that the power of his cross will be released in this place. That the power of his cross will be released in this place. That's the capsule of our transformation. In the cross. Oh, we acknowledge the workings of your cross in this place. We glory. We glory. We glory in your cross. Rest, rest, rest. Father, we 
ask that the power of your cross will be released in this place. Our expectation is not an increase of our knowledge base, but that transformation will happen. Oh, let the, let the partnership of with the cross that makes for death, that makes for death, that makes for death, let that work him be released all over this building and everywhere these words will be heard. We ask for a release of the power of the cross. Paul said that I might know him. The power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering. Oh, that I may be made conformable unto his death. So that somehow I may attain to resurrection from the dead. Oh, let resurrection begin to happen as the cross puts men to death. Oh, let me no cosa bifika no ferosa mi fa poate la tiza. Sunte me ke non te mata yasha. Let that which makes us alive to the systems of this world, let it be crushed by your cross. We trust you for an emergence on the other side. For thou will not leave my body in the grave. Now allow your Holy One to experience decay. We come, we come, we come. We come to be made. 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 We perceive that there is a call for confirmation. And we say yes to your cross. It's here. It's here. It's here. I will communicate tonight there will be a working of the cross of the Christ it is by the cross is God's instrument of crucifixion to the world that's how we become dead to what operates in this world I shared this with us many times that the more the more dead you are to the visible realm the more alive you are in the visible realm I've also shared with us that you see this realm, if if you retain existence in this realm, you will your existence will be as a victim. If you retain your existence in this realm, you will exist as a victim. There is a call, there is a call upon the body currently to shed this body. Now, when I mean by shedding this body, it doesn't mean that we should die physically is that our existence there is a longing a craving that our spirits are more alive i've shared with you that that you go to church does not make you a spiritual man a spiritual man is someone who is more alive in the spirit than in the flesh you can be more spiritual than a dead man you can be that's a spiritual man he knows how to optimize that realm more than this one that's what a spiritual man is You can sing and not be spiritual. You can pray and not be spiritual. Because prayer can be a ritual. You know, it is it's the end the same way. Prayer can be a ritual. That a man prays and prays and prays. And he cannot touch the realities in prayer. Awesome time we had in Akure, myself and um, Pastor Gabriel. Awesome time. Awesome time. Awesome time. I perceive strongly that God is opening up that region. He's opening up that region. I mean, last night I put up what God told me as I came into the town. I took a walk around and um, the Lord began to speak to us. So I know that in that region, apostolic centers will begin to grow. What we went there to do was to sow a seed. And they will be born. They will be born. 
in Federal University of Technology at Korea, there will be apostolic centers. In um, what universities in Akumba, we, 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 we had someone also come from Akumba. What university is that? I declare Jashi. We call forth, even in that place, in Joseph Ababalola, we call forth the rise of apostolic centers where men will not be raised to sustain baby existence, but where mighty men will be raised. Awesome time we had the truth. Now, let me begin this. You know, the Lord has been taking me on very tough journeys when it comes to preparing sermon. So, before I left the boom, so I had the sermon for Friday evening and Saturday morning prepared. And as I picked up my notes Friday evening, the Lord said, Drop it, just follow me. And by the time I got back to my hotel room, I discovered that I had preached Friday night and Saturday morning on Friday night. So I said to him, I said, Lord, now what do I do? He said, sit with me. So I sat late into the night. My food was on the table. After a while, he said, okay, you've done enough writing. Um, I, I must have written like two, three pages, two pages. And then he said, you've done enough writing. Um, go to bed and then I will speak to you in the morning. So I slept a little and I was quickly up. He didn't speak until about, um, the meeting was for 10.30 until about 9.15. And then he said to me, he said, that first portion of scripture that you wrote, about five verses, that's all that you will preach this morning. And I was like, Lord, how would those five verses capture what you want to do? He said, follow me. He said, follow me. So, you know, we're up two and a half hours and then I had eye contact with Pastor Gabriel and I discovered that we had almost exceeded our time and we're still traveling. So, I brought him up to round up the meeting and it was two and a half hours on those five verses. It blew my mind. Because the Holy Ghost was supplying scripture and scripture and scripture. Picking up truths out of that and connecting and connecting and connecting. Our work or our call is to labor in partnership with him. And the proof of laboring in partnership with him is ease. Take my, take my yoke upon you. Which means that if he says my yoke, it means there is your yoke. And it means there is their yoke. So if there are fellowship leaders here or church leaders, understand that that church that you go to has a yoke. When you become a leader there, there's a yoke they can put on you. You can wear it and you will do ministry. There is a yoke that you may take on yourself, by yourself. I must, I must, I must, I must, I must, I must, I must. And then you take the yoke on yourself and then you wear out with time. But you can also decide to shed the yoke of that ministry and shed your personal yoke and take his yoke upon you. Because when you when you take his yoke, you carry that, you don't carry, his yoke is, is heavier than you actually. If I've explained to us how yokes work. His yoke is heavier than you. But what happens is that when you take his yoke, he didn't say take your, my yoke upon you and walk. He said take my yoke upon you and learn of me. So in the learning process, as you are bearing his yoke, you are developing muscles. Transport is happening. E is equal to MCT that tells us that as an object moves through space, it increases in size. By the number of collisions that it has, it increases in size. You are growing by MC, MC squared. That's uh, the, uh, the, the Einstein's equation, right? That's why you are growing. You collide, you collide, you collide, you collide. And collisions is what is making you grow. So there are things that God will be handing over to you in this season. And when you look at them, they look enormous. The secret is to take his yoke upon you. Bear his burden. Don't bear yours. You can bear yours for years. But eventually you will see that bearing your burden has no eternal, eternal impact. He ends that statement. He says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. It may land on you heavy, but with time you'll be able to carry it. That's what they call ministry. I think I said during the week, I said ministry is not all, it's a part. And who saw that post? What you have been assigned to do is what God wants you to do. Leave every other person. Ministry is just a part of the whole. It's not everything. So calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Let him lead you. I shared in our career and, and with this I'm going to come into the sermon. I said that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost has a, a, a threefold operation of leadership or guidance. A threefold operation of leadership or guidance. 
it is by the Holy Ghost that a man comes to Jesus he sponsors conviction that's why you came so the Holy Spirit leads men to Jesus it is by the Holy Ghost that you make up your mind that you want to give your life to Christ that's coming into Christ it is by the guidance of the Holy Ghost that men come into Christ but when you come into Christ you must understand that that realm called Christ is the realm of all truth so it is also by the Holy Ghost that a man is led in Christ so he leads you to Christ he leads you into Christ and he leads you in Christ that's why you cannot on the day that you gave your life to Christ you cannot go up celebrate you can celebrate and you can mark years but when you mark years you say I'm, I'm two years old now in the Lord be sure that transport is happening because there are people who have been led into Christ and who have tabernacled at salvation there is more there are more truths the gospel is more than just salvation there's more so the Lord said to me that the movements of the spirit or with the spirit are basically spirit sponsored if you cover distance at all with the Holy Ghost he sponsored the movements however mortals must initiate those movements when we engage in certain processes in God the Holy Ghost completes the partnership and he moves. So, the Lord began to, you know, wake up back in me. Those, those vehicles by which men move in the spirit. You know, last week I spoke to us. I rounded up with an invitation. That the birth of a new season is actually an invitation to another place in God. So, I'm speaking of movements now. That to come into another place in God, the one who, who causes movements is the Holy Ghost but he causes those movements when a man initiates processes with God for example when you get home tonight and instead of sleeping you decide to pray he cannot decide to for you to pray he cannot make that decision but when you decide to pray you activate Romans chapter 8 verse 26 and then he begins to carry you in prayer so he is the one who makes movement possible but a man must initiate by a decision when you agree to do what he has been empowered to help you to do movement happens when we come to the study of the word we begin to stop the word is actually a vehicle of transport but it doesn't start like that it starts only by you know by enlightenment and just like we learned in, in plants, simple biology, that if you plant a, a plant, is that correct? Yes, now. You plant a plant by the window. With time, the plant by itself will lean in the direction of the light. It means light supplies visibility, but light also engages for transport. So when you, are, when you begin to study the word of God, I was sharing during the week that when you begin to study the word of God, it's as though it doesn't profit you in the beginning. Just like when you are hungry and you dump food into your mouth, your stomach is hard, but feeding has not started. Feeding is actually activated when the body enzymes begin to act on what you are eating. That's why I know when I've engaged the word that it begin letters cease to be letters and the true nature of the word of god begins to be released i begin to encounter spirit and life that's when the breakdown process has come if you follow through with that breakdown process what will be the aftermath is that you will begin to change transport will begin to happen you will begin to lean in the direction of the light with that leaning happens a positive deformation that's what happens to the plant that is what will happen to you when you begin to worship, you might just be washing plates. I mean, okay, okay, let, let's let's say it in the modern way. You might be doing dishes. Is everybody serious? That's why I'm trying to tone it down. You might be doing dishes, or you might be you might be doing your laundry. What I mean is you're washing your clothes. And um, you sense that there is a presence. I believe that God, okay, I'll get there. You sense that there is a presence. 
and your response or God sponsors some kind of um, revelation in your spirit I have taught you that when revelation comes the first thing is not to write down and be thinking of who to preach to the first thing is not to begin to pray and say Lord this thing the first resp response to revelation is what? is worship we have seen his star and we have come to worship him when light is sighted worship must be your response so you begin to worship you begin to worship it begins like a normal song and then the currents will start to come the presence becomes stronger because when god wants to meet with a man god does not want to waste time when man is not ready what you first the light you first got was introduction and many times the tabernacle at that introduction where as you begin to worship what you discover is that the presence is further whipped up and then clarity comes to the light and with the clarity of light men can engage and movements are made in the spirit that's transport but a man must engage when he sights the light that's why i said the holy it is the spirit that initiates those movements in christ but it's a man sorry it's the spirit that sponsors them but a man must initiate so i want you to live here and begin to crave for a, the reality of every spiritual process that you engage what i shared earlier was about fasting the reality of fasting is that strength is renewed one of the realities anyway strength is renewed so until you know you see you cannot assume that strength has been renewed my hope in christ is not an assumption if it stays at the level of an assumption it means i can be unconvinced that somebody comes and tells me ah i am not assuming that jesus will come again i am not assuming that i am born again i don't believe i am born again because they told me that i am born again i have experienced the reality of the indwelling of the christ that's why i know that i'm born again I don't believe that tongues are potent just because scripture said it. I have handled the potency of tongues. And that's what you must crave this year. It's a kingdom of realities. It's a kingdom of truths. But the, when I emphasize that, it is that everything, every light that comes to you is the revelation of a truth in God. Those lights are tangible in their real nature. So you must come into the tangibility of them don't fast and they say it's 12 you are fasting for one day good family fast we break at three and then the family gathers together to pray at three and then you start eating when you have not known that strength has been renewed leave the you know we arrive in god at, at different timings how many people know that we can all start praying together but our, our degree of travel as a matter of fact all that we did this evening the last time somebody went that far was last Sunday. So where is come where he came from from home? Two of you left the hostel together, but you left at different locations in the spirit. So if you worship for two minutes, I can look at you if you were already farther than me before we left home and say, ah, why are you like that? It's because where we came from is different. That's why I can't live my life based on your terms. So let's read our Bible. We are back from school. Let's read our Bible. And this guy reads for five minutes. And then he closes his Bible. I'm not saying read for five minutes. He reads his Bible and closes for five minutes. And then you, you are still reading for two hours. And then you say, ah, he's on spiritual. Do you know where he started reading from? It may take you three hours before. You know, I was sharing with them. I said, when you first begin to study the word, in one you, you could do three hours you could do three chapters per day you could do ten chapters per day and to the beginner ten chapters per day looks like he's doing well but as you grow you begin to do one verse in ten days that you will understand that the steadfast love of the lord which was a revelation of the way he works never ceases his mercies never come to an end they are new every morning that every time you encounter that portion of scripture there is a new unveiling what we have come to interact with is not just the wisdom of God, it's the manifold wisdom of God. It's in multi dimensions. So you are looking at the same scripture and you are preaching many verses on it. 
an undergraduate is giving a certificate that shows that you know so much about so little. Oh, sorry, you know so little about so much. That's an undergraduate. You know so little about so much. So you are doing anatomy, right? Physiology too. Good. And I mean, one of you still take anatomy courses now. Yeah. So, but you don't know as much of anatomy as your professor of anatomy. He doesn't know too many things. Or he doesn't know about too many things. He knows so much about so little. That's where mastery comes. That's where mastery comes. So everybody begins as, you know, everybody's there, everybody's there, everybody's there. And then someone shows up and says, this guy is an apostle of prayer. We know that when he begins to pray, it will look like you don't know how to pray. Even though you have been doing 20 hours. Because he has found his place in the Christ. And he has maximized the truth that has been revealed to him. So I welcome you to the open gates of heaven. I welcome you to the open gates of heaven. We are in for a good time. We are in for a good time. Because as light comes, there will be shiftings. They don't pray to shift. The, the, if, the, if it is the truth of God, it will shift you. If it is the truth of God. If I am not, if, if I am not fabricating things, it is the truth of God. So let us put to test this year the things that we would hear. If it is the truth of God, it will move you. If it is the truth of God, it will sanctify you. So one of my expectations this year is that we'll have a church of sanctified people. Because the Bible says, sanctify them by your... Thy word is truth. So every time a man is exposed to truth, it is as though you are in, you, you, walk, you, you drive your car. And I don't know, I don't think there are too many in Nigeria. But they are driving car washes abroad. At, at least we see them in movies. Yeah, don't worry, we'll take ministry there very soon. But they are driving car washes that maybe somebody was chasing the guy. And the guy wanted to escape. He just runs into the car. His car gets cleaned because he came, because he moved into that place. There are locations like that. So I'm trusting God that all that will be ministered this year will be truth. No embellishments, no exaggerations, just truth. Not my mind, just truth. Because I'm trusting God that we will do our part in hastening his coming. For Bible says he's coming for a bride who is what without spot or wrinkle. One of the instruments of preparing the bride is the ministry of truth. That's the ninth mandate of AWCC. The Lord said to me, I was on my way from Lagos about five years ago or six and he said the time will come in the body of Christ when people will yearn for truth but they will not be able to reach it so you must go in search of truth and bring it to them I am sending you to do that assignment I think we have come into that season where we must be accurate with truth because truth will transform we have labored in corrections for too long just expose men to truth let them behold it the person of truth the utterances of truth for we all with unveiled faces beholding us in a glass the glory of God we are transformed into the same likeness from glory to glory who is the glory of God it's the person of the Christ and we beheld him shall behold him it will be face to face in all love is glory this year we shall behold him We shall behold him. This is our craving, Lord. Face to face, our Savior and Lord. Jacob was running from Israel, but he happened upon a place. And when the ladder showed up, what he saw at the top of the ladder was the Lord. 
It will be a year of multiple openings of portals in the spirit. Where ordinary men will be running from all kinds of things and they will happen upon spiritual places. I bring you word, I bring you word. That what you used to call your normal devotion time is about to experience a shift. It's about to experience a shift because there is an urgency that the bride is aligned. And the alignment will not come just by, by that which is earthly. There will be sightings of heaven. We will learn the government of heaven by viewing this year. That's what God is doing. That's what God is doing. It is by that process that the little ones among us will be as strong as David. It's by that process because they will not need to be schooled for long. They will see. They will see. They will see. Have you not seen that when children learn, they learn by visual aids? That's what God is doing. We have sustained a generation of children. But I bring you word that God will raise for himself. In this generation of children, mighty men, they will see him. They will see him. They will see him. They will see him. They will see. Him. Get ready. Get ready for encounters. Get ready for encounters. I bring you word from the presence of God that this will be a year of multiple encounters. Multiple encounters. Multiple encounters. When you see him, when you see him, you will know that it was the Lord that you saw. You will behold him. You will behold him. Your eyes will see the salvation of the Lord. The salvation is not an act. The salvation of the Lord is the person of the Christ. That's why we waited. That's why we waited. That's why we waited. Because him that shall come will come. Shekaloki Kanorosa by by I see the gates open. It's open, it's open. Monte Lekomasi Navarato Tata. Hey, Pahiese de Pahasa. Pahiera Kapasia Tatate. Recadente Leta Pahasa. Ishaka Nabati Leta de Bosetuaha. E Parati Monte Tate. In a little se Patiante. Patiante. The heavens are opening. I hear rain in the spirit. I hear rain in the spirit. I hear rain in the spirits for the dry land shall be flooded. I come to announce the revival of the church because rain is about to fall. It's about to fall. It's about to fall. I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. I'm a dying today. Ah, I see the breaking of the brand new day in which the name of the Lord, oh Lord, in a manner, I see the breaking of a brand new season. I see the breaking of a brand new season. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Let's sit down, sit down, sit down. Ha, 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 ha. Can I? 
All right, let, let's let's do this. Let's do this. If you were accosted on the road and someone asked you a question and said, um, "What is the name of the Lord?" What would you say? Anybody? What is the name of the Lord? Can can I have a microphone? Minister Sunshine, what is the name of the Lord? Yes, what would you say? The strong tower. Okay, she will call him the strong tower. Now, names like the strong tower were names that came from scriptures. I bring you word. In Within the next three months, because of your multiplicity of encounters, when you are asked what the name of the Lord is, you will come with an original name. With an original name. Because when, he, when Moses met him, when Moses met him, he said, I have introduced myself, myself to Abraham by a name. But I will introduce myself to you in another name. Now, listen, listen, listen. He now said to Moses, he was not just saying, uh, this is my name. He said to them, I did not. It meant that the dimensions that you are seeing, I made sure that they did not see it. So that they could not call me by that name. It is a season of originality. Your encounters will be original. Listen. Listen. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach, but the Lord is not allowing me yet. Let me say this to you. Some of this... Hold on. Hold on. The, the last season was characterized this way. That until a man is in alignment, he cannot interact. But the Lord just said to me now, that those is and the encounters will draw men into alignment because because by ordination by ordination by ordination Hagar was not supposed to have a revelation of God but when the baby began to cry God changed the rules and said see water and one of the names of Jehovah was born the one that sees me. And you will know him differently. It will not be unto him that willeth. It will not be unto him that runneth. It will be by the God who shows mercy. That will be the tool of growth in this season. Mercy. Mercy. No, I'm not surprised because I've discovered that for every major thing I pray for this year, the Lord has led me to always pray this way. Lord, show us mercy that you will do this thing. Ah, but there will be strong men. 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 Will be strong men. Thank you, Father. Let's try again. Let's try again. No, play on the piano. Not on strings. Let's play on the piano. This year you will recognize your tools accurately. Now you see, one of the things that will happen when you come into an apostolic movement is that you think that all that is served is for you. An apostolic movement, just like the fullness of the operations of the other fivefold, brings the church not just into alignment but supplies and equipping okay now when i speak of equipping is the root word for the word equipment it means that it supplies to every man based on need now some of us in our wiring are a slave to sound not because we want to i'm helping some people now not because we want to but that's how we are wired so we can preach for eight hours because the spirit activates us to pick revelation by sound it's not that way for everybody sound may be a disturbance to you but watch this 
when Eliab and his friends went to fight Goliath, what they were skilled in using were swords and spears and shields, right? But when David was offered what they were offered, because of fellowship, he knew that he was not structured yet to fight in that dimension. The fact that he could not use swords and spears did not mean that the weapon he had was impotent. There is no swordsman in scriptures like David. And none could raise swordsmen, master swordsmen like David. But for a season, he was a slingsman. You will go to a lot of schools this year because there's an urgency for maturation a lot of schools a lot of schools you'll be going to the world you'll be searching for something else and then when the heavens open when the heavens open there is a shift of emphasis you know this guy was running from somebody so what was in his heart was the last instruction don't marry from among us run away to that place and marry from there but he jammed another introduction on the road get ready for sudden news fastings that you didn't prepare for you wake up one morning and you fasted for many days and you have planned to eat today you just left the kitchen you are carrying the pot and the Lord says wait upon me and if you will obey if you will obey there will be mass movements you know there are two ways that we learn in the spirit the cheapest way to the, 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 the lesser way based on the strength of learning is to learn by utterances somebody teaches you because you hear with your physical ears you digest it through your soul and it touches your spirit you can it can be distorted but i perceive based on my experiences this year that and you know the apostolic lifestyle is that god downloads blueprints by you and then he makes you the template of what he wants to do so i can prophesy that the lord will bypass your ears and will bypass your soul and there will be carvings upon your spirit so when you when when you meet life situations you will not know what to do by learning you will just do what you need to do that's what samuel said to saul he says you will do as occasion demands they don't need to teach you when it happens like this is what you do if you see the, if if this is what this scripture is trying to say the years of trying to say are not there the Bible says, who has known the mind of Christ? Or the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. It tells us that we have the mind of Christ. It means there is a fusion. It is by that mind that we see into his intents and his purposes. You don't need to be taught everything that you know. It's this season. It actually, it ha however, rather, it calls for a lot of humility. Because it will not, you will not teach by labor. You will not instruct by labor. It will come with ease. It will just right there where you are you open your mouth and you become a tool the first time you are learning what you are hearing is when you are speaking it it's a strange year it's a strange year ministry has changed ministry has changed that's why i sang that song i see the breaking of another day because we we the names of men have been glorified the animal's nature of what god is doing on the landscape now we hide men the only, we can only say it's God because we know the person. So somebody looks at you and know and says, "Ah, ah, when?" You will also respond when. You know when they used to say when you could say, "Ah, you know I've been praying." Now, now your prayers will not be able to break this intensity. Humbling encounters, humbling manifestations. Okay, let, let's let's try again. Okay. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I come on a shatter by Hassan. Elaminoke, Romando, Sesum, Pre Tavasi, Kapahan, De Shesi, Kohos. All right. Now listen to this. One of the realities that a man must fellowship with as a tool in interacting with God when the gates of heaven are open. Is the reality of sharpened spiritual senses. Let me start on that note. Sharpened spiritual senses. It is because God can be missed. 
And if it will be one of the utterances that you will travel with this year, let it become a conscious reality that God can be missed. A man can miss God. Next Sunday, I will, you know, I will take us from Genesis chapter 28 verse 1 and we'll travel from the instructions of, um, of um, Isaac to Jacob and how he, he, he left from Padan Aram and then he traveled. But the, what the Lord wants me to, because I prepared all week anyway, and this afternoon at about, or maybe morning, at about um, 10 o'clock, he said, don't preach that again, let's do something else. So I had to sit down again and we started again. The reality of sharpened spiritual senses. Because I said to us last week that eternity is not statics. Eternity is mobile. And so that which is revealed to a man happens, let me use the words of Apostle Joshua Selman, when a man positions himself on the trajectory of the movements of God. So all of, most of us have basic knowledge of physics, so we understand what projectile motion is. That when you project an, uh, an, an object, it travels through a particular path. That's the way God moves. So when he moves in that way, you encounter the realities of the movements of God by being positioned along the path of travel. So if I throw a stone, the object at the end of the line is what receives the impact. You will not feel any impact. You just know that something moved. So to feel the impact of a stone, you have to come into alignment so that the stone hits you. That's where you feel it. Because the movements of God are like forces. And forces always have a particular line of travel. That's where spiritual sensitivity comes. So in yester years, you may have a particular time that you sleep. You can't have it now. Because it may mean that the time that you used to sleep is the time that you wants to start coming now. So you must be sensitive to the changes in the operations of God. So that you can optimize fellowship with Him. I know it is good that, you know, before you go out in the morning, you read your Bible. It is, it is good. So that you receive instructions from there. Sometimes I advise some people, when I see the, their construction, I say, do your Bible study last thing in the night. So that you read in the night. Your dreams now are instructed. And then when you wake up in the morning, you will still wake up with you wake up with the scriptures that you read last night, but you come into your day with new light based on that person's construction. It's not for everybody. But you need to be sensitive. And I've, I've instructed us that one of the tools or there, there are two basic tools of sharpening spiritual senses. One is the word and the other is much prayer. Not prayer, but much prayer. Now, when you go to... How many of you have been to a blacksmith shop? A blacksmith has basically three things that help him do well. Apart from the raw material. He uses a lot of air. He uses a very hot fire. And then he uses water. Am I wrong? Ah, okay. Me, I've, I've seen the local ones. The what 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 do you call themselves? They are lagbeders. Eh? That's how they make knives and they make cutlasses. They put it in the fire. Yes, you know you have the hammer too. The hammer beats, and then they cool with water. They check, they restore it back. It's the same way. That's what. That's how we arrive at sharpness. Of spiritual senses your senses of sight your senses of hearing your senses of knowing so that you can you may be in a group and then by the sense of knowing you just know that something is about to happen in this spirit not a mishap because i've noticed that a lot of people can sense mishaps very few people can sense positives in this spirit so don't climb that bike it will jam on the road but they don't know which bike to climb the Lord will help us it will be one of the realities of the year the help of God so one of the realities that a man must fellowship with as a tool of interaction when the gates of, the, of heaven are open or as the gates of heaven are open is sharpen spiritual senses I said in case you do not know God can be missed now, when we say God can be missed, there is, a, there is a new school of thought. 
that says that we should not i said it in akure also that says that we should not pray that the presence of god comes into a building because god is omnipresent but the omnipresent nature of god's presence is hundred level because by the omnipresence of god god is in hell hell is who created hell now was it the devil have you seen a 1978 Toyota Corolla before? How do you know? You know everything may have been destroyed on it. How do you know it's a Toyota Corolla? You see, it's the insignia of Corolla on it. It's the presence of Corolla. So everything that God has created bears His stamp of intellectual property. So was it Job or the psalmist who said, "Even if I hide myself in hell," he says, "The psalmist he says, you are there." So God's omnipresent makes it su- he supervises by presence. What happens in hell? The devil doesn't govern that realm. No man governs his prison. They can have a class captain in the cell, but he's still under the jurisdiction of the PO as a prosecuting officer. So he's there. By the omnipresence of God, he sees the man, the married man. Who goes to sleep with your married girl? God witnesses it. His eyes cannot behold sin. Abina, eh, but he witnesses it. That's the strength of God's omnipresence. The omnipresence of God goes to the beer parlor. He sees the number of bottles that a guy is buying. And that guy drinks seemingly to no consequence. The omnipresence is strong but that's the degree of his intensity when you come to the second year or the second level of the presence of God I think we have a someone like this now the presence, presence of God there's activities of the presence okay revision quickly when you come to a second level you come into what we call the gathering presence God has bound himself by an oath that wherever two or three are gathered in his name meaning their gathering is under his authority and that the meeting is supposed to is designed to manifest his characteristics that's the mystery of the name i will be there present so in every church service if it's not a shrine if it is a church god goes there but you can go for a church service and your experience after the church service is how was the service is beautiful one day we will calibrate the descriptions of church services so that we know what spiritual experiences make for beautiful in the spirit that when you say ah church was exciting let us know what happened and happened the realities you encountered that were summarized as exciting you know i i, I was saying yesterday in um, in our career, I said a man can interact with God and still come back with the wrong conclusion. You don't know. When Philip was testifying to Nathaniel, he said, We have met him of whom the law, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote. It means before Philip saw Jesus, he must have studied the law. Of, of Moses and the writings of the prophets so he had interacted and he saw that this is him that they wrote about what was his conclusion the son of Joseph the son of Joseph but you got it right now did they call him the son of Joseph so a man can have genuine encounters with God sincere encounters and your conclusion about the person of the Lord may still be wrong. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So Philip, Nathaniel had to help him. Guy, the prophecy is me I read. Nazareth was not captured. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? He now said, come and see. So I was telling them that I don't think all that event happened the same day. Because Jesus saw Philip and said, follow me. And then the next verse, Philip too went and found another person. He will not have had the testimony of an encounter if immediately I say follow me 
you think I'm worth following and you go and invite your friend. Uh, no, that's, that's wrong. So it must have been probably days, maybe even weeks, maybe even years. It could not have been instant. But what tells me that you see, let me say this, Yoruba. Am I a car in church? It's good that you have been in church for a long time. You know, that thing seemingly calibrates testimonies that make somebody's testimony look more superior to another one. That me have been in this church for 10 years. This guy just came yesterday. The guy who came yesterday, if he comes into alignment faster than you, his conclusions will be better than yours. Because Jesus did not preach to Nathaniel at all. He just said, I saw you. And a dimension of truth came out with, I saw you under the tree. And he called him instantly, my master, my teacher. When? How did Jesus teach him? It means there was an impartation on the spirit instantly. My teacher, the son of God, Philip Omoyo, the king of Israel, son of, you know, you know what son of Joseph means? Sonship there means representation. So this guy represents Joseph. And in an instant, a higher order of revelation opened to Nathaniel. The jurisdiction is wider than Israel. It is wider than Joseph. It's Israel. So Jesus did not upgrade Philip's revelation. He upgraded for Nathaniel. You are burnt here. You are schooled. You are closer. So he said, because I said that, you believe? You will see greater things. That promise you will see greater things was not to Philip. It was to Nathaniel. Even though it was Philip that brought him. So be careful when you bring people to church. Philip is a system in church that does evangelism. Not so winning. That, that's evangelism. That does church invitation. That's Philip. It's a system. Nathaniel is also another system that came because they were inquisitive. You mean those realities happened? I will follow you. But sometimes God begins to discuss with Nathaniel and Philip moves away. He says, Let me expand my jurisdiction for you that a time will come hereafter. You will see the heavens open, and then you will see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That's an upgrade to Son of God. Jesus caused him to travel till after resurrection to show that a time will come. When what you see now as a representative of God will be a representative of man in the throne room. Because we have a man there now. He also took him backward to Genesis. I was saying to him, I am Jacob's ladder. It's upon me that they go up and down. I would rather be a Nathaniel. I would rather come in late and meet with the Lord than come in early and carry out a wrong conclusion. We're trying to put together the message from Akure. We're trying to put it. He's in pieces. So, Jerry, remind me. He's in pieces. He's in about eight pieces. So, you just match them together and then we'll have the two messages. Is that fine? Good. The omnipresence. And then we progress to what we call the gathering presence. It heals. It delivers. It does all of that. But the gathering presence is not an obstructor. That's why men come to church and they still, man still shows up in church. We still do the things we want to do. We sing the songs we want to sing. We pray the prayers we want to pray. Even though he said pray according to the will, the presence of God is there because he's there. But they still pray their mind. But what you call the, the advanced level of the presence does not even have presence in his name. It's called the Shekinah glory. That's the presence that a man encounters in the holies of holies. That presence is a killer. It is designed to fight anything that is not God. So when anything that is not God interacts with it, the outcome is not a shining. The outcome is death. That's what happens. Where is uh, Michael? You were asking me a question during the week, right? Yeah. So when, Mary, when Moses was carrying the censer, and then um, Korah, Dathan, and Ab Abiram came and said, Ah, are you the only one God chose? We too can carry it. God said, Leave them alone. Let them carry it tomorrow. 
So, but you know, Moses warned them because we must understand the protocols of death in that story. They did not die because they were not purified. Because if you read your Bible, Moses instructed them to sanctify themselves, which was how far Moses knew in his syllabus that if a man is sanctified, he can carry the censer. So they did what Moses knew, but Moses didn't know that there was still a higher syllabus. That even when a sanctified man does what is not legalized to do, he can still attract death. What I'm sharing with you now is ministry. I will do more during the minister's conference because ministry has changed. We cannot keep doing business in the holies of holies, which is where the church has come into. Like we used to do in the outer court. It must change. It must change. It is in the holies of holies that we hear his voice. It is that presence that brings the voice of God. It may not be felt, but it's tangible. So you can sit down and there's no electric, you know, some people experience electricity. If you stand long under the shower, you experience the same feeling. That's why your spiritual senses must be sharp. The clothes you used to wear and there was no shock. If you wear it now in Amatan, what happens? It's not, it may not be God and it may be God. So we, our senses need to be sharpened. Because Jacob's confession was God is in this place. I did not know. Is it possible that a man sits with his Bible for six hours and is struggling to understand? He will have optimized the six hours if he had acknowledged the Holy Ghost. But he was waiting for God to come. Because yesterday I felt a tingling That's what we used to use A tingling sensation Yesterday I had goose pimples To show that God came Yesterday came in a loud voice Yesterday was when pa Pastor laid hands on me And I literally fell off But today is just speaking And you are waiting in case he will lay hands on you Sorry he told me not to do anything like that today But men can come into from higher levels of the partition, that contact. God is in this place, and I did not know. This must be a terrible place. The house of God the gates of heaven the house of God the gates of heaven is someone hear what I'm saying the house of God the gates of heaven I said to us that the reality of this year is that we will see heaven and we will mirror it so I'm saying this must be this is a terrible place the house of God the gates of heaven now, now I'm prophesying to someone I'm reminding someone of their identity The house of God The gates of heaven But it's a terrible place It means encounters with the believer Who is the temple of God Are terrible encounters Because the believer is the house of God And the believer is styled in the spirit To mirror the gates of heaven It is also that when we go beyond the level You don't understand what I'm saying Do we, have, we have a someone like the house of God right maybe two years ago know ye not that your body is what the temple of God the temple of Shongo is the house of Shongo not so so Jacob said this must be a terrible place the house this terrible place is the house of God this terrible place is the gate of heaven so when I understand the operations of the gate of heaven The expectation of God Is that those operations must be released by me I'm supposed to mirror the operation of heaven's gates 
because I am the house of God and I am the gate of heaven so that when we gather together on Sunday church service is a terrible place that's the design it's a terrible place if they fly over church they drop because it's a terrible place it's the house of God and it's the gate of heaven before I go into breaking that, let me bring us quickly into the mystery of spirit cities. Let me do that quickly. Now understand this, that, and we have proved it, that if you, you can create spirit cities on the earth, the encounter of um, what I mean by spirit cities is a place, a geographical location where anything that happens on that geographical location experiences the presence of a spirit without alignment so so a few years ago let me give us a practical a few years ago we some churches that wanted to lift their heads in this town had a bird attack. How many of us remember that? Time? We had, they had bird attacks. It was the old that was going to monitor them and do all of that. So you know, I was talking to one of my brothers, a pastor, and he was showing me how the old came and they beat the old. The thing they die. They put kerosene on it, set fire on it. The thing did not burn. How they saw snakes and struggled to keep them, and then the snakes ran. So I woke up that morning. And on my brown rock, I saw about a meter long snake strolling gently on it. What? This house? I paid the rent here. So as it was walking, if you know my old house, you know the rock now, was walking to the kitchen. And I thought, what that fridge, what fuck up, what for a bomb, glory a joke. Let's not kill it. Snake. If you came physically, go back by the way you came. If you came spiritually, go out and die where you came from. And life must continue because I pay rent. Because that house is a spirit city. So we finished church and we went home. And the bird came on a Sunday night we came on the Monday morning and it, we saw it dead as though it was slashed by a sharp object wings, it was decapitated pieces and then the second one came after a few weeks and there was blood on the walls on the ground, everywhere what killed it? it came into a spirit city certain activities had cooked up a presence that leaves a residue when they go home now that creation is possible by every believer vibrant family altars are designed to sponsor spirit cities in homes and that's the kind of home that me and i grew up in that we knew that some if something strayed into the house they strayed in to die because the presence had been cooked up so even someone who is you know you go to some houses and then you just sit down and then you feel like ah, you feel and you don't have to go to so there are locations like that on the earth Every, all places on the earth are not equal why do people go to a mountain to pray? it's because men cooked up the atmosphere if you cook up your room when people come they will come under an influence so I encourage you, let's create more. Let's create more. You know, people go around and say that, you know, God can only live in human beings. Lie! God can live in physical buildings. Run into a Shango shrine, pack the goods and run away. Okay. So, so Shango shrine is more potent than church. You know, the days are long gone when people should be able to steal in church and go scot free now. You can enter Shongo's house. You carry that, uh, you carry one pot. 
and go and use it to cook you eat that food to no consequence when we get to the afterlife ask Belteshazzar he will tell you that even if a cup is not in the temple and, it, and that cup was capturable uh, if you drink with it you will come back with a feedback a hand will appear all things are not equal that's you see I like sharing this thing so that it brings us in T.D. Jake says the first step to repositioning yourself is exposure. So we need to share that there are certain realities that are life. You must upgrade your expectation. I want to leave a chair in my house when I go to be with the Lord. When my children, the days they feel unanointed, they don't have to be pastors. They can sit on it. Like E.W. Kenyon's chair that still cures cancer. They can sit on it and they can they can the heavens will open one of my passions for going this far with god is i want to give my children something let them have god isaac just cheated someone oh, sorry jacob he was running away and he happened upon the place where his father had a commitment with god what, what did a thief, what did a robber have with God that made the heavens open? It was a generational place that he came to. Our children will ask us. And says, when you you know, some children ask their parents, they don't say it loudly. When they see a chip in their house, when everybody was struggling, you were playing, Abby. But a time will come when we thought the money houses and cars. Some people's children will ask them, when everybody was going after God, what were you doing? When your mates found God, what were you looking for? You will say the things that the Gentiles were seeking. When a biological father goes to be with the Lord, he has houses, he has cars, he has lands. But I will be able to comfortably say what he said to his biological father. He said, don't give me anything. I have enough. God has blessed me. And I want to say to my father, you don't need to worry. You have given me what will make me. You have given me God. You gave me a hunger. I'll share with someone that when we were small, you know, we didn't know that if you heard the trumpet, you went for rapture. We thought that you will hear the trumpet and you will remain. Does anybody see beneath that here? No. If you heard, you went. You can't hear and remain. Because those who remain will be looking around. So you understand? Yeah. So we used to think that if you hear the trumpet, you will remain. That you can still remain. So I remember that myself and my mom were frying something. Maybe fish or something. And daddy was with us, talking to us. We didn't know he had moved from the house to the hospital. So I looked back. And I did see him. And I went, hey, something has happened. And you know, my mom kept frying fish. Ha! Huh. She kept talking. I was in my heart. Oh. And you know, my going to call the We're here. Because it, it was a trailer. I think the, 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 the horn had a problem. So the sound was continuous. I looked at her again. After a while, I said, ah, mommy, that didn't come. That's why I was here now. Ha! Huh? You know, she didn't code. Definitely she, she was more school than me. So I started, I went outside. I was like, hey, hey. You know, and the only films that instructed us that time were the first set of films that Mount Zion did. You know, those with those with those soldiers that come and then start arresting people. Yeah, world cops. So we are afraid. And then after a while, I saw him going to the said, I said that you scared me now he said no he was just done with the conversation he felt he wanted to have some time with the Lord so he took a walk and that thing instructed me that it means you have seen something in this man that you are sure you are sure you are sure that if rapture happens even if you don't go he will go I want my children to feel like that it's pressure 
and it doesn't matter which kind of homes that we came for God wants us to leave constructions upon the earth that people can come and they will encounter God without words because you have labored you have labored I was doing a study during the week and it was revealed that Solomon's temple was standing on the is standing on the place where that vision was seen so the, the portal that Abraham with his work with God opened was an eternal one no other temple could house God no other location could house God and that location was so so powerful in the spirit that even the Bible said even if they were taken as slaves to a foreign land they did not have to see the temple to activate God they will just look towards Jerusalem and activations will come but I'm sharing with you that beyond the geographical location there are men as the gates of heaven that encounters with them draws out the life of God I want to be that kind of man I met a few ministers but every time I'm privileged to be around my spiritual father I know that he's a living portal I know I know I know he doesn't have to pray before energies are drawn he doesn't have to speak for too long before energies are drawn my one encounter with Apostle Joshua Selman told me that that man is a living portal my encounter physically personally with Dr. Pastor Paul Enerche tells me that he's a living portal they don't have to pray for effect when you come close you come into another environment that's what i that's that's my target lord i want to follow you to a point that you can commit yourself to me you know he gave me one of the sermons dr paul um dr pastor paul and he said god does not want to give you a house he does not want to give you a car what god wants to commit to you is himself fear not abraham I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. Let them run after any other thing. If you have found me, you have it all. That's the heritage that we should have. It's a new season. Go for God. Go for God until you find him. Let your definition be the man and the woman that found God. Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider For you are more than enough for me Jehovah Rapha You're my healer I know that For by your stripes I am healed set free Jehovah Shammah You are with me Hamakota Barahasi To supply all my needs That's true But you are more than enough You are more than enough Lord you are more than enough for me Lord you are more for you are more than enough Lord you are more than enough yes you are more than enough oh Lord but you are more I call you more You are, you are, you are. 
my priority who can compare to you Sano Kelole Maha great is the measure of your royalty it's a new truly Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, let's let's race down a little. Let's race down. Let's race down. Now understand that Jacob happened upon this location by fulfilling or obeying a command. Do not take a wife for yourself among these people. He was sent to the brother of his mother to go there and get a house. When God, when these encounters with the open gates of heaven are about to be born, they are preceded by seasons of instruction. Our alignment in fulfilling those instructions will ultimately open the heavens. Now I know that there are some people who also say that the heavens are always open. It's, it's, it's a lie from the pit of hell. When one of the things that certain strange teachings that happened on the body of Christ have robbed men of is reality. So, men are led into assumptions that have not been proved. I can give you again and again and again locations in scriptures where the heaven opened. Jacob was just one. When Jesus was baptized, over his head the heaven opened. There was something that came. There are quite a lot. Not all atmospheres are the same. So the challenge in what I just shared is God is, is, is wishing, is wishing, is wishing. You know, I, 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 there was something I was going to say um, during the conference, I think my first session during the conference. I said, I said, my notes I said that the design of Eden is that it was the place of the present and Adam was supposed to give back to sons in Eden so that the sons learn the government of Eden they learn the protocols of Eden the operations of Eden but based on the decree that God gave man to be fruitful and multiply Inhabit not, inhabit not Eden but the earth and subdue the earth the essence of Adam being in Eden was not just to enjoy Eden but as he gives back to sons in Eden and his sons come into Eden culture they will leave Eden and go to the ends of the earth taking Eden with them that's the mystery of a spirit city that for example if you go to Ikeji what's the that place now? Arakeji that's where Apostle Ababarala walked. You are supposed to come into certain dimensions. And that's why you see many Oriokes. The true ones and the fake ones. So people go to the place and they come back with dimensions. And those dimensions because they are tangible in spirit can be installed in another location. So if we come together for this meeting, Sunday evening meetings or Tuesday evening meetings, and we, we come into some dimension of God, or we go into our fellowships and churches and come into some dimension of God, the reason why the services on Sunday or during the week are not eternal services, they are transient, is so that men can embody realities and ship those realities outside church. That's how we govern. That is kingdom. Kingdom thrives by export. So our labor is not essentially to get more people in. What motivates getting more people in is because we are sure that when God comes upon them, they can export the culture. And by the exportation of the culture, is there a word like exportation? Yes, ma'am. By the exportation of the culture, they can expand it. So there's Eden in you. Jesus said the kingdom does not come by observation. He says the kingdom is in you. 
the governing system of God comes into the human spirit or comes into, into, into a marriage with the human spirit, the day you gave your life to Christ, that governing system begins to work in you. It subdues lust. It subdues the, the, the desires of the flesh. That kingdom in God's heart, God desires that you release that kingdom because if you now export it, it will do in the landscape the same thing it did in you. As it was empowered to curb the flesh in you, if you export it, it will curb the flesh in the environment. That's the essence. You are a spirit city. Jesus was silent on spirit. He said, you are cities. And you are not scattered. You are set. You are rightfully positioned in places that you cannot be hid. That's why all of us don't live in the same hostel. All of us are not in the same department. All of us don't go to work in the same places. It's so that we can ship out a culture. Abraham was first dealt with in his spirit. They were, they were, they, he had a belief system. We know scripture says that. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. He went into covenants with God and walked away from it, but God still had his eyes on the location. So when Jacob happened upon it, I'll do that a lot more next week. A lot more next week. I know we have a conference over the weekend, but I've checked the timetable. I think most of the activities end in the morning, right? Or maybe like one, two o'clock. And so the reason why I want to do this is that we will not the conference will not make too much sense if I don't finish open gates of heaven. But let's let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. But tentatively, there's a meeting next day. I'll be teaching on open gates of heaven part two. So Toma, Toma, why is our second designer? She designed the flyer for this Sunday. So, um, so city set upon the hill. One man city. When you come into a region, you come in with a civilization, a language, a dress culture, a food, a feeding culture. What else do we have in the civilization? An economy, a religious culture. There is that which makes families active, that is wired into you. An educational system. One man. One man. So we don't have, we are too many. For what God wants to do. And you know, I, was, I think I was sharing with you yesterday. Maybe I just said it in passing. That the sounds that I hear in the spirit now is that one of the most pronounced operations of heaven right now is sorting. 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 You know why you want to rise? You go to the market if your rice is not the correct one. You have stones. Especially if it's local rice. The stones are almost like a tithe of the rice that you bought. No, tight. No, I, I, I hollow that word. Tight simply means one over ten. Now. Abina, okay, you want me to say a tent? Okay, a tent of what you bought. That's 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 the way that rice is wired to be. So, if you don't want to endanger yourself, you know why you buy it in the market? Stones and rice. What do they call it for you? Rice. When you buy that kind of beans, some of them were displayed on the ground. So goats had come. And the poop of the goat is already inside it. Uh, but everything is beans. If you eat that part of it, your stomach will still be big, but you will have reactions. There's a lot of realities that are coming into the body of Christ, and God must do an urgent sorting. So that we know what is good for the body. That's why custodians are being raised. Let me throw the word custodians to a side. And use the proper word because we are dealing with the gates of heaven. That's why gatekeepers are being raised. We can't fully explain the concept of the gates of heaven if we don't understand what gates are in the spirit. That's why I said, You are the house of God, you are the gate of heaven. What is heaven's expectation? How what do gates do so that you can live by mirrored existence? The Lord said to me that gates are gates are principally for two purposes. The secondary purpose that gates offer us is access. That's the secondary work for gates. It's the smaller of the two. 
So when you hear gates, the lesser light for gates is access. That in a wall, you, you see an opening in the wall, and then things are erected for access. It is the duty of those who keep those gates to know when to open the gates, to know when to close it, right? I'm explaining this. When I speak of access, I speak of the individual believer and the destiny of the church itself. In every church assembly, there must be gatekeepers, not ushers. As a matter of fact, the usher is supposed to be a gatekeeper in the spirit. He's not supposed to position people from his mind. If a suicide bomber is coming to church, churches are bombed because the usher is not a gatekeeper. Because you are supposed to possess canals in the spirit. You see, our job is more sp- is, is spiritual. You used to say it's more spiritual than physical. Our job is spiritual. Physically, we are victims. There should be a gatekeeper who can scan, who, who like Elijah, can hear from this a distance and see from a distance. You know, policemen use scanners. You don't know. And most of their eyes are just up. That's why they look into a car. And say, you come down. There's something in your bag. How do they know? Oh, you think it's only psychology? You can't stand on the road. You carry a gun. It means you want to kill. And there's a possibility of being killed. You have a wife and children at home. And the only thing you know is psychology and a gun. Uh-uh. The person will die on time now. He must fortify himself. He may have a pastor somewhere. Like those soldiers. Or those Boko Haram soldiers in Dunamis now. Abi, They will come and say, they were shooting us. They are, they are, they are, they are khaki, army khaki will have bullet holes. But no bullet will touch the body of the person. And because they are hiding, they, they, they carry the mobile spirit city to some Bisa friends. gatekeepers. So access is the basic one. That's the secondary job. Access. Access. We monitor what comes into the kingdom. So when you are the a gate into the kingdom, evangelism will be easy because you know that the access into the kingdom is you. When you meet them, there is a release of what is in the kingdom so that through your life, through your ministry, they can come into the kingdom. Access. And then you have a key. I will explain where the key came from. You have a key that in case this guy wants to leave God, you can tackle the guy on his, on your knees and say, God, we will not lose this one. And corruption wants to come to this one. Like, like, you know, I, I was sharing Pastor Gabriel how 2003 to now is when? 14 years. How that there was somebody who was misbehaving 14 years ago? How many? 15 now. And when my friend said, come and see this person is misbehaving. I said this one, leave him alone. I have locked this person in God. His life will be super stormy. If he takes a step out of the Lord. And the life was in tatters. Till he crawled back. Because When you see Jonah, you think it's all by will, ask him. Jimmy Jonah said, I'm, I'm not doing this by force. I said, I'm going to... God said, go. Enter. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I said it recently. You see, some of you are here tonight because your mother's prayed. And you will be foolish to want to live on your own. All kinds of things will happen to you. And they have told God, God... My dad used to pray that prayer. The Bible says the children of the righteous will be taught by the Lord. So Lord... If he wants to step out, teach him, whip him, rock his life, but make sure that he stays. And that's terrible implication. That your parents helped you make the decision. I've shared with us when you give back to children, they want to christen them. Look for spiritual men. When Jesus was born, what did you know? Simon and Anna were doing programming. This child shall be for the rise and fall of many in Israel. How on a child? On a child? Children do be a homo, a daba, a ha. 
ni bi ta nlo e a lowo to ba lowo te si ba nle nko programming if you give me your baby to carry it's not your baby you collected back yes ati bless you ati programming just i hold this baby this baby's spirit belongs to you jesus the soul is under your government this body is not lent as an object of unrighteousness before where by time this baby gets to a knowledgeable age before the world comes calling lord i ask that you come first draw him keep drawing him. if this baby decides to want to go against your will lord force him into your will keep him into your will jesus said when i was in the world i kept them now lord keep them in your name this one shall give it to me it's a short time it's a short time but we just want another soldier because we need many it is the train of a child in the way of the lord is in the way you should go anybody that does anybody can do the programming when he's old he can stray when he's old he will not depart he will look for the way it's programming my children will be better than me i know i know i know i know my children will be better than me because god is not teaching us by the time they are my age by the time they are my age if they will be exploring in fullness the powers of the age to come in fullness and what i'm doing now to this program i'm not just talking that's the kind of children i want to give back to that they will not make the errors that i made they cannot i've made their own for them abina you want to make your own you want them to make their own i've made their own for them Their heritage will be God and God all the way. All the way. From day one, they will love Him. They will know Him. You know, communications with the Spirit will be easy for them. How did I get here? How did I get here? Eh? Gates. Okay, allowing and disallowing. Okay, that's the key. You lock it. You lock it. Oh, Nijade. They come to carry you for parties. You have constipation. Instant. There will be a ministry or something to disturb that movement. The day that girl comes and the brother wants to something ministers to him that now he has money. You know, when, when people don't have money, some thoughts don't come to their heart. Today, something will minister to him to go and do something wrong. And then his ATM card will be missing. So let's just keep praying. All those blessings and and joys and what are their names now? And faith that are in brothels and all of those things. If you will engage God, if you engage God, some of them have prophecies hanging over their heads someone just has to remind god of the words that were spoken they will come back the church is that powerful it's the ones that we release to god that go that's the truth and i want you to come into that understanding the ones that have stayed permanently are the ones that we are allowed to go you can't come and go so access now on the other side the primary purpose of gates is government. And that's something, the reality that I want us to go on with, I'm just going to read six things to us and then we go to pray. When we behold the gates of heaven, be, before we get into the gates, there must be an impartation of the nature of what we see. That's the reality of this year. That as we behold, we are transformed. So the Lord said to me, maybe I should read so that I'll be fast. He said to me, He said, Okay, let me know, that's part of it. He said, The mystery of gates reveals the destiny of the church of Christ and the believer who is the house of God and also the gates of heaven. He said, gates are governmental entities. They are places of central activity. What happens at the gates? It is at the gates that important business transactions are made. 
So when we come into church, the church is actually a place of spiritual transactions. What have, we don't see buying and selling in the physical, but there is a lot of exchange. There's a lot of exchange. A lot of cost is being, a lot of, you know, people pay in church. It's not just offering. There's a lot that we pay. Your worship is, is, a, is a currency in the spirit. And then when you worship appropriately, there is a feedback. Your prayer is a currency in the spirit. When you release it, there is a feedback. Your faith is a currency in the spirit. So when we gather as the body of Christ, the house of God, the gates of heaven, we go into business transactions. People should not go back home the same. One of the things that all marks are experiencing in church is fellowship. And fellowship has a sharing in it. You come with a dimension. And in reward, God rewards what you came with by what another man came with. So you are better when you go home. I've said to us many times, don't come to church just to, I want to receive. You must come with something. You must come with a virtue. You must come with some dimension of grace. If not, you defraud us. Business transactions. What happens at the gates of heaven? It's at the gates of heaven that courts convey. And council of state sessions are held. If you read the book of Ruth, you see that it was in Ruth chapter 4, the Bible gives us the picture of how at the gates... The elders will sit and they will deliberate. If you go to Deuteronomy chapter 21, I have the portions here. You can write them down. From verse 18 to 21, Moses gives them a rule that if you have a child who is misbehaving, you have spoken to the child, he doesn't want to hear, bring the child to the gates. And then the elders will sit, it is at the gates they will pass judgment. So all the gossip, uh, this our child is misbehaving. It's to church that you bring them. It is in church that disobedient children are disciplined and they are realigned. It is in the house of God. And when a man becomes a living portal, when they bring such reports to you, God releases a judgmental dimension and lives are aligned. Court sessions. So when we go to church, we have legal, spiritual legal luminaries that come to church. They know about the legalities of the oppressions of the spirit realm. When such men lead prayers, the church is fortunate. Because they will not ask a means. They are like guided missiles in prayer. They understand the protocols that govern heaven's system. Ah, all that such men may rise amongst us. That we will not spend hours praying when we have not fulfilled legalities men that are gifted with the, with, the, with the history of God in the past you know one thing, lawyers don't just throw laws around they also cite examples in so 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 year you did this law, in so 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 year you did this law, in so 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 year these records were written so they can refer back to covenants that preceded now and say, Lord, because you said, do this now. Two Sundays ago, I was in my house. And the Lord took me back to 1840. When the nation called Nigeria was ceded to the Fulani race. It was a spiritual transaction. So what they are coming to claim is legal. They were supposed to come like a cloud from lower northern Africa. And take the whole land to the sea. That was what they signed. But God opened my eyes to see another court session. And I was able to recognize the three men in the court session. It was in my list. I mentioned first by Elton. I mentioned Apostle Ayobola. I mentioned Apostle Moses Oimoladi. They were the witnesses to the rewriting of that document. So God told me what the enemy has is not the upgraded fashion. You must bring forth the weaknesses again to testify that there was a transfer that happened after that date. They don't own this land. And in the next few months, you will see that they don't own it. 
what they have is genuine, but it's been upgraded. It's, an, it's been amended. So when we come to church, we come with documents like that. And we begin to legislate. Not panic. Because we are a government. At the gates, public announcements are made and heralds alter their saints. In Proverbs chapter 1, when wisdom was speaking, wisdom was speaking at the gates. That's why it was crying out. In 2 Samuel chapter 18, when Israel was going to go to battle, it was at the gates that David was giving them their marching orders. So when we gather together, we gather to receive marching orders. Like the charge that, um, that, that Paul gave unto, unto Timothy. When we come, we don't just come to be excited. We don't just come for burdens to be taken away. Those are the extra benefits. We come to receive command statements from God so that we can run with them. We come as people setting ourselves on the rampart. Waiting to see what you will see. That's where seasons are uttered. When we come to church, we come to receive verdicts from heaven's courtroom. Throne room utterances. All that our church services will recover that dimension. That will not hear men speak. Heaven gives voice to divine counsels at the gates of heaven. The next time you speak, I know you will not speak because we are told to speak. You will speak because heaven has put words in your spirit. I have just two more to go and I round up. Or we go to pray. It is at the gates that news is received. As we declare and prophesy, it is at the gates. In the Jewish system, when people go to war, the city receives feedback at the gates. So when people have labored in prayer in their hopes and they come to church, that is how church became a place of answers. That even though there was no prophetic service as the minister is speaking, men are receiving feedbacks of the things they have said to God. That I know when you get to anatomy of physiology now, when you get back to your physiology class tomorrow, and somebody begins to speak to you. You see, we'll stop celebrating the false prophetic moves when we all become the gates of heaven. That from your mouth, people can receive counsels of heaven. It's a new location in the spirit. And finally, what happens at the gates? The gates are centers of spiritual dedications. You know that you can take over a city if you know where the gates are. All you need to do is to conjure some things at the gate. That's what the diabolic dimension does. Because they know that the gate is not wood. The gate is a living entity in the spirit. And when sacrifices are offered there, that's a sacrifice is actually a currency in the spirit. When the sacrifice is not sacrifices, I don't like when we say sacrifices are given. You pay it. Let's have the, the cost thing. It's offered. It's paid. Those entities that are called the gates, they begin to follow. They align with the direction of those who, who paid the sacrifice. Paul and, and, and his, and I think that was Paul and, and Barnabas, they came to a particular city. And when people saw them, people gave them names. Oh, this is yours. This is Hermes' speaker. And the Bible says at the gates, quickly the priests gathered together and they began to raise sacrifices. And the apostle said, Stop. It all happens at the gate. So when we gather together, we are so designed to raise sacrifices unto God that heaven is appeased and geographical regions, territories come under the government of the one who receives the sacrifice. That's who the church is. Now, somebody is saying, Oh, Pastor, how does church and gates relate? Let me give you a portion of scripture and then we go to pray. Matthew, you read for us. Or if I get there first. Matthew chapter 16. Someone reads from verse 17 to 19. 
no, no, I want you to use my phone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Yes. Blessed art thou. Blessed art thou. Simon Bajona. Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee. Yes. But my Father which is in heaven. Yes. And I say also unto thee mm. that thou art Peter. Yes. And upon this rock I will build my church. Yes. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Yes. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth. That's access. Shall yes. be bound in heaven. Yes. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth. Yes. Shall be loosed in heaven. Yes. So when I was studying this afternoon, I'll do this quickly. The Lord brought this portion to me as my roundup tonight. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to see? He said, I want you to understand that the church has a prophetic destiny as a gate. He said, because of a basic law that I have given you through scriptures. That altars fight altars. Blood only fights blood. A sacrifice needs to be raised. If a sacrifice was, was raised to invoke a cause, you need to raise another one. So things operate in parallel in the spirit. So if Jesus came and said, because Jesus rather came and said, upon this rock I will build my church. And he says, the attack on the church will be sponsored by the gates of hell. It must, it, it becomes potent only because it works together. So it means the church is actually another gate representing another government. The gates of hell is actually a government. So you can only fight a government by a government. So that is why we are emphasizing that the warring church is a church that has enjoyed fellowship or enjoyed gathering but has graduated into a governmental system. Because our attack is from a government. Our attack is from a kingdom. And so we must meet kingdom by kingdom, government by government. Now, in the original translation, it did not say gates of hell. It says gates of Hades. Does anybody have a translation like that? It says gates of Hades. So the Lord said, study a little about Hades. So I began to study. You know, I go into those extra things when he tells me. And I began to study about Hades. I won't go into all the, all the things. You know, if you're seeing God of, gods of Egypt, you understand the operations of Hades. Hades is actually the underworld. It was said that there were certain um, gods who gave birth to six sons, three daughters, three sons. Oh, sorry, six children, three daughters, three sons. And then the sons revolted and said, you are gods, but we want to fight the other gods. They fought the other gods, they won. What's the, that battle that they fought against the other gods is what is captured in the Clash of the Titans. That's the movie. So when you see it again, is that fight? So in the class of the Titans, you will hear Hades, you will hear um, Zeus, and you hear Poseidon. Those are the three songs. So when they conquered, Wikipedia says that they divided their realms of oppression. And I'm speaking to people now who have embodied governmental warfare. They zoned the air to Zeus. They zoned the sea. To Poseidon, so that it, you will still have to tackle Poseidon if you want government in the sea. You will still have to tackle Zeus and his boys if you want government in the air. The underworld was zoned to Hades. His name has metamorphosed, and so some people just call him Pluto. But in his original name, Hades, and then he built his own, he has his own boys, he has his own princes, Eubius and the rest. Now, his main signal for oppression are keys. So Jesus said, I give unto you the keys because you will need to establish government by the oppression of keys. You are not just going to fight anyhow. So when you see Hades, pictorially, he always holds keys. What does he use the keys to do? He understands that he's a gatekeeper. So anybody that enters into the world of the dead is locked. So when Jesus was going to advance, they had to address the gates. Because nobody had gone down to the world of the dead and had come back before. Are 
I don't mean keys to prosperity. I don't mean keys to pass exams. Keys are mysteries. Jesus said unto you it has been given to know. And I told you that it's not that it is not to bank knowledge. Okay, I know the mystery of, I know the mystery of. It is to intercourse with them so that governmental dimensions are born. That's what knowledge is. The proof of effective intercourse is that there is conception. Unto you it has been given to know. The question is, as a church, what do we know? What do we know? Have we raised a force that is potent against the gates of hell? We must recover our gate mandate. We must recover our gate mandate. That's what the Lord said to me. After the conference, I'm going to be ministering on the on understanding the Great Commission. The Great Commission is not to get more souls into the church. It's a governmental dimension. He didn't say go to the world and make converts. He didn't say go into the world and get more members. He says disciples. Discipleship is bringing people by teaching into a culture. Discipleship is colonization. That's what it is. You baptize them when you have colonized them mentally. You now, you now immerse them into the character and the authority of the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. And then you teach them, you instruct them, you command to observe all things whatsoever. I've commanded you. It's a governmental dimension. It is indoctrination at its highest level. Indoctrination that will bat mutation. We are important because we have departed from the essence of the things that Jesus left to us. But in this season, I see as we look at heaven, as the gates open, there will be a mirror in. 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 There's a new church rising. There will be a mirror in. As I'm declaring those words, they are going forth as prophetic utterances. They are going up, up as alarm signals in the spirit that there is a recovery of the gate mandate of the church. This is a terrible place. That's the testimony of our fathers. This is a terrible place. When you characterize Zion in Hebrews chapter 12, the only definition will be a terrible place. Because it is a place of eternal entities. Can we rise tonight? I'll finish up next week. It's a night of recovery. It's a night of recovery. Shanako kabarasetekekiata. Upon this rock, I will build my church. Lo siate emontosa pahata. We have come. It has been written of us in the volumes of the book that the house of God is the gates of heaven. Tonight we come to miracle of mental dimensions. Let the clarion call go forth. Let the gate mandate of the church be recovered. We sound the alarms in the spirit. Andele abande salabahande. Alabande bele bele de beli de bele de belos. Let the generation rise that will mirror the oppressions of the gates of heaven. The 
आए 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 हे आए हे आए 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 Shantina, Shalapa, Papa, 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 Papa,